Hello, my name is Steve Mantamonji, and I will introduce to you the Monash Simple Climate Model. The Monash Simple Climate Model is a web-based interactive interface where you can learn about the climate, climate models, and climate change simulations. So the best way to introduce this is that we just have a look at what the web pages look like and how they work. So let's enter the Monash Simple Climate Model. So the overview page here gives you a main overview of what kind of interfaces you have and what you can do with the Monash Simple Climate Model. So the main interfaces are these three interfaces here. I will talk to you about them in a second. And then there's two other interfaces, which is the tutorials that teaches you something using these three interfaces. And then there are the puzzles, and the puzzles give you little exercises or little fun tools where you can test your knowledge and also learn a little bit. And these puzzles also use these three interfaces. OK, so I will start with introducing the first interface, which is the deconstruction of the mean climate. OK, let's click on it, and a little window comes up where we can choose between the standard and the basic version, and it gives you some information about this um, deconstruction of the mean climate interface. The standard version is basically for university students and people with a stronger background in climate physics, and the basic version is more for students at high schools or mid, mid school or primary school or for the general public. So let's go for the basic version and later on I will explain to you what the difference between the standard version and the basic version is. So let's click on the basic version. So what comes up here is an interface which allows us to do a few things. So in the center you see an animated figure. You can stop the animated figure here below the slider and you can continue it and you can move the slider to change the animation. To the left, you see a little sketch for experiment A, and you see a number of switches which you can control experiment A. And you see the same thing on the right-hand side for experiment B and the switches for experiment B. And when you click on one of those switches, you can turn on or turn off one of those processes. And depending on what kind of combination you do, you simulate a number of processes in the climate system or you don't simulate. In this case here, you have switched off everything and it's only the sun, summer, uh, shortwave radiation, and the summer radiation going back to space. And then you can turn off the atmosphere, you can turn off the ocean, on the ocean, and you see the sketch will be updated. Turn it off again. And then if you want to know what does all this mean, what does clouds mean, or what does oceans mean, you can click on the little icons. And if you do so, you see that there's a little information box coming up, and it explains to you a little bit of what is the role of the clouds in the climate system and how does the simple climate model that we use here is simulating clouds. And it tells you what happens if the clouds are on and what happens if the clouds are off. In this case, clouds are off, there is no cloud cover. And you have information for each of the processes here. Every time you click on one of those um, switches, you see that the figure is not changing. In order to change the results, you have to click on update the figure. So let's do a little experiment. Let's say we turn on everything here, but we turn off the clouds. So you see there's no clouds in this sketch, and there's a cloud in this sketch. Everything else is the same. And then you click on update the figure. And then you see it's animated again, and then you can see, you stop it for a second. And now you can see the difference between the two experiments. In A, we have the complete climate system with clouds and everything else. And we have this kind of a climate. You see the red colors indicate warm temperatures, and green and blue indicate below freezing temperatures. And for the experiment B, you see this on average looks much warmer, has much smaller regions with blue, and purple, which is really hot, above 50 degrees. And that is the experiment where we have no clouds. So you can see the difference between these two. Let's put it then down here in the third panel. It's the difference A minus B. And you see everything is green and blue. Green and blue means that A is colder than B. So the climate with the clouds is colder than the climate without the clouds. And then you can play around, do, use all kinds of combinations of switches to see what happens. And you can use the slider to go through the time. In this case, it's a different calendar month. And you can click on continue, and then the animation continues. You can stop that again. What you can also do is you can look at a time series plot. You can go on a time series plot. 
then you see um, in the time series, so on the x-axis here is time, it's in this case the calendar months, and then on the y-axis is the variable that we are looking at, it's the surface temperature, and the orange curve is for experiment B, and the green curve is for experiment A. And you can see the climate without the clouds is much warmer than the climate with the clouds. And this is the global mean that we see here, and you can choose here in this corner, you can choose the location of what we want to look at in this time series plot. We can, for example, choose Melbourne, Australia. And then again, we have to update the figure to see that something happens. Okay, now we see the time series plot for Melbourne, Australia. You can see Melbourne, Australia is in the southern hemisphere, so the summer is in January, February, and we got the hottest temperature in January, February. And you can see without the clouds, it's really warm in Melbourne, Australia, and with the clouds, it's a normal climate. Okay, let's go back to the um, map view, start the animation. So at the beginning, I said there's a basic version and there's a standard version. We see here is the basic version. That means the number of switches that we have here are six switches, and this is a simplification of what the standard version has. We can go to the standard version by clicking on this here, where it says version, basic version. If we click on it, then we see we switch to the standard deviation. Version. And the difference in the standard version is only in terms of number of switches. You can see now that we have many more switches than we had before. So initially we had six switches, and now we have a few new ones, like the diffusion of heat, advection of heat, diffusion of water vapor, and advection of water vapor, and model corrections. So we have a larger amount numbers of processes, and it's slightly more complicated. And we can switch back, and we see the fewer numbers of switches. Okay, so much about the deconstruction of the mean climate interface, where you can play around with and learn something about the mean climate. Let's go back to the overview page to go to the next interfaces. Okay, here's the overview, and we now go to the climate change scenarios interface. In this interface, we can see how the climate would change if we have a certain forcing, change something to the climate system. So I'll stop the animation. So in this case, you see the scenario which we can choose here, and the scenario is called IC, IPCC RCP 8.5 CO2 forcing. And the CO2 forcing that you can see here is that we increase the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. We start here in 1950, go to 2100, this is the time of years, and here you see how the CO2 concentration increases. And then in this animation, you see how over time the temperature, surface temperature is changing. So I continue the animation. You see here we are in the year 2015, and then it continues until 2100, and you can see how it gets warmer and warmer. And the upper plot shows you the annual mean. Um, let's stop it here, 2080. And you see this left plot shows you the December, December, January, February mean, so Northern Hemispheric winter, and the right one is Northern Hemispheric summer. And you can pick different scenarios, and you can also pick different variables that you can plot. You have a number of variables that you can plot, and you can pick quite a few different scenarios, different IPCC scenarios, and then different idealized CO2 forcings, and changes in the solar constants, or changes in the solar cycle, and other scenarios. You can pick here one, let's say CO2 wave. So here you see then CO2 concentration is going up and down, up and down, and you can see the warming goes up, and this warming goes down, and the warming comes up again. And you can again have a time series view. In this case, you see how the climate responds to the wave of CO2 forcing. Quite often, it's interesting to compare to two different scenarios. So therefore, you can click on this button, and then you have a slightly different interface. In this interface here, we compare, in this example, two IPCC scenarios. And the upper one is a strong increase in CO2, and the lower one has a peak in CO2 in the middle of the century, and then it's a moderate decline. And you can see the result here left is the first scenario, and the right is the second scenario here. And you can see at some point in the middle of the century they behave differently. This left one warms more, and the right one warms less. And then by the end of this century, you can see that the left one has warmed a lot, and the other one has warmed less. So this interface here, then allows you to compare quite a few different scenarios with each other and you can see what the different effects and what the different scenarios, how the time evolution is different in these scenarios and the response patterns are different.
Okay, so it's not so much about the scenarios interface. So let's go back to the overview. We have the overview again and now look, have a look at the deconstruction of the response to a doubling of CO2 interface. This is quite similar to the deconstruction of the cli mean climate. So again, we can choose a standard or a basic version. So let's go for the basic version again. And we have a very similar interface as for the mean climate. Let's stop the animation first. So here we do two experiments, experiment A and experiment B, and we double the amount of CO2 and we make a simulation over 50 years and see how the climate is changing. And the figures here now show, show the change in the climate variable, here the surface temperature. In the left we have an experiment, we can um, switch on and off some boundary conditions and we can switch on and off some processes. How this works is described a little bit more detail. If you click on the heading here, you can see a little bit more information of how these response experiments work. And in this case here, we have everything switched on, so the whole climate is able to respond. And in this case here, we have switched off the boundary conditions. That means we have replaced realistic clouds with um, clouds everywhere the same, and the same humidity. And we have these feedback processes. We do not allow them to respond. And then we can see how the different responses look like. If we continue our animation, we see that the left one is warming more over land and less over the ocean, so it has a distinct pattern, while the right one is everywhere the same. It has almost no pattern. We stop it and we see at the very beginning of the simulation, everything is zero, and it warms first over land and then it warms in the rest. And at the end of the simulation, after 50 years, the left one has a distinct pattern and the right one has no pattern. And by switching on and off, you can see how this pattern comes about. And you can, of course, also have a time series um, over the 50 years and compare the two different time series. And again, we have a basic, we can go to the map, we have a basic version that we see right now, and then the standard version is again a little bit more complex with more parameters that we can choose from. Okay, so this is a deconstruction of the response to a doubling of CO2 and it helps you to understand how the climate change pattern comes about and why the climate is warming by a certain amount if we double the amount of CO2. Okay, so let's go back to the overview to the next interface. Okay, so we have been through the three main interfaces and now the next two are different versions of playing around with these three main interfaces. The first one are tutorials. In the tutorials, you see basically a number of tutorials for the basic level and a number of tutorials for the intermediate, the standard level. And you see in this case here, you have a number of tutorials that explain to you the mean climate. You have the role of processes and two different versions. You can follow this assembling the components where you build up the climate step by step, something about clouds, CO2 concentration, and something about the model errors. And you have an tutorial on how the climate change response looks like and the different elements of the response. And you have similar ones for, on the basic level. They are here a little bit faded because they are not active yet. We are still working on them, but soon they will be available. And you can go through these different uh, tutorials and you learn step by step a bit of a discussion of these different interfaces. Okay, so let's go back to the overview. Okay, and then we can have a look at the puzzles. The puzzles are basically little problems where you can get feedback and you have fun playing around with these interfaces. You see you have three different levels, beginner's level, intermediate level, and then the expert level, which is very difficult. So let's just have a look at one of those to see the basic idea of how these puzzles work. Each of them is different. So here, climate elements is a very simple one. It explains a little bit what the puzzle is about and how you can solve it. I'll show you here an example. Again, we have a similar um, interface as the deconstruction of the mean climate. Let's stop the animation for a second. So here we have again the switches, but now the switches have no names. So they're just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you have to figure out what kind of process is uh, controlled by the switch A. And then if you know which one switch A is, you can put it into this table. Let's have a look. For example, we try it out. Let's put on A and we update the figure. And you see in this case, Mostly it gets colder, but then in the winter and the Arctic it gets warmer. To me, as a climate expert, I would say these are probably the clouds. So process A is cloud. And then we try to figure it out for each of these different switches. 
And eventually, if you think we have a solution, you know, just randomly put in here some values. And if you think we got the right solution, then we try submit solution. And then, oops, sorry, there was something wrong in the solution. So try again. And eventually, if you get the right solution, you will see a congratulations window and a happy face. Okay, so these are one of the examples of how you can have little exercises and learn a little bit, test your knowledge on the climate system. Let's go back to the overview. Okay, so basically we've been through all the different um, interfaces. We have the three main interfaces and then the two interfaces playing around with the three main interfaces. And that's basically all of the monosimple climate model. So I hope you like it and play around with it, with it and hopefully you learn something about the climate, climate models and climate change. Thank you.